Can a country be obsessed with a planet? This seems to be absolutely true for the Soviet Union and Venus. But why was this nation so crazy about a planet that is actually considered a boiling hot hell? What did the Soviets really want on Venus? The latest revelations reveal shocking experiences and previously unknown details of the most extraordinary space mission of all time. From the 1960s to the 1980s, the Soviets obsessively fired 16 probes at Venus. Many of them failed, and the cost of ever better probes and new technologies was immense. In the days of the Cold War, money was no object. It was all about a merciless arms race, and that didn't stop at space. The scientists of the former Soviet Union could not afford to fail. They doggedly launched probes almost every month. The Soviet Union created a myth with its Venus exploration and provided unique impressions of one of the strangest planets we know. Imagine how difficult it must have been in the 1960s to build probes that could withstand temperatures of over 450 degrees Celsius and pressures equivalent to the weight of 90 jumbo jets on your fingers. The engineers skillfully tinkered the most advanced cameras into thick layers of insulating and protective materials. The result was images that astonished the world. Venera, eight missions have failed. It is truly amazing how determined the Soviet Union was to land on Venus. The missions caused a lot of speculation at the time. What were the Soviets really planning to do on Venus and why Venus of all places? Of the total of 16 Venus probes, eight missed the mark, disappeared, or the missions failed. Despite this, the Soviets did not stop firing one probe after another at the planet from the 1960s to the 1980s and presumably invested hundreds of millions of dollars in the projects. Was it really just scientific curiosity that drove the Soviets? Or was there more to this obsession? Venus was of particular interest because it's similar to Earth in size and mass. Traditionally, Venus was often referred to as Earth's sister planet. However, we now know that it has completely different conditions to our home planet. The impenetrable cloud layers of Venus hid the surface of the planet, and for a long time, nobody knew what Venus really looked like under this layer. The Soviets' motivation was really not just scientific. The Venera missions were also part of a relentless geopolitical competition between the USA and the Soviet Union. During the Cold War, every success in space also meant a political victory. Everyone wanted to demonstrate their absolute technological superiority. Basically, the Venera mission was something of a technological fist bump for the Soviet Union. The researchers already knew back then that Venus was hot and poisonous. Only the best should succeed in landing on this extreme planet. After the USA delivered the first data from Venus with the Mariner 2 mission in 1962, the world was shocked. Hot poisonous, and with a pressure that could crush a human being. Venus was considered impossible to explore, and the Soviets used this scientific shock to show the world who was the most intrepid and powerful force on Earth. Shock, Venera 7 successfully landed on Venus. It must have been a crazy time when probes were launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, sometimes every month. Of course, the Soviets kept their failed missions top secret at the time. This sensitive data only became public after the opening of the East and the fall of the Soviet Union. You have to imagine that back then, the Soviet Union only released strictly censored information, and of course only the best and the most successful. The country had to demonstrate power and superiority and to admit that Venera 2 and Venera 4 had simply flown by or disappeared would have been tantamount to defeat. The first successful landings on Venus were reported in the international press. With Venera 7, the Soviets achieved the impossible and defiantly showed the USA their technical superiority. This was in 1970, when the Cold War and the space race were in full swing. The US had landed on the moon in 1969, and the Soviet Union naturally had to counter this. With the first landing on a planet, and Venus to boot, the Soviet Union succeeded in striking a blow. With Venera 9, the Soviet Union went one better, and in 1975, data transmission from Venus to Earth even worked for the first time. 
the nation proudly announced that it had the first exact data on the surface of Venus as well as some blurred images. Anyone who now thinks that these successes were the crowning glory of the missions is mistaken. This was just the beginning and the incentive to build more probes that would withstand the harsh conditions of Venus for longer and provide even more data. USA vs. Soviet – War of the Worlds East vs. West – It was a war of superpowers. After the Second World War, the victorious Western powers and Russia split. After the October Revolution, a communist regime developed in Russia under the leadership of the Soviet Union. The ideological differences between the capitalist West and the communist East led to deep mistrust and a policy of isolation and confrontation. The period after the Second World War was an era of tension. East and West engaged in a technological arms race, and the space race was one of the most fascinating and intense periods of the Cold War. Although this era made many people fear a new war, the extreme competition also brought mankind groundbreaking technological advances and spectacular space missions. This space race officially kicked off on October 4, 1957, when the Soviet Union surprised the USA with the launch of Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. This success triggered a massive reaction in the USA. They feared espionage from space and more. In the U.S., this led to the rapid establishment of its own space agency called the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA for short. In the early years of the race, the Soviet Union was ahead. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first person to orbit the Earth once aboard the Vostok 1. This triumph was another slap in the face for the U.S. The Soviet Union celebrated the day like a great propaganda victory and Gagarin became a superstar. Two years later, on June 16, 1963, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space, and the Soviets scored another major success. The USA reacted, and President John F. Kennedy announced the imminent landing of Americans on the moon. This goal was achieved on July 20, 1969, with the Apollo 11 mission, and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men to walk on the moon, becoming heroes just like Yuri Gagarin. To the annoyance of the Soviet Union, the USA also achieved other significant successes in space during this time. The Mariner programs had provided the first detailed images of Mars and Venus, although these photos were from flybys and not from the surface. After the missions, the US government and NASA announced their intention to send the first lander to Mars. The Soviets then chose Venus as their target and portrayed the USA as too cowardly to explore the inhospitable place. Shortly after the first successful Venera missions, the USA landed on Mars on July 20, 1976. Viking 1 was the first man-made spacecraft to land on Mars, sending back detailed photos and scientific data from the Red Planet. One of the lesser-known details from this period is the fact that there was also a collaboration in space. American and Soviet spacecraft were coupled in 1975 as part of the Apollo-Soyuz test project, resulting in a historic handshake in space. Venera 13 and 14 – The Peak of Venus Madness Even today, engineers still marvel at the technology that in the 1970s was capable of braving a place that is over 450 degrees Celsius hot and has a pressure of 90 Earth atmospheres. After the early Venera missions successfully demonstrated that it was possible to land on Venus and send back data, the Soviets naturally wanted to go further. Venera 13 and 14 became highlight missions. With a high-quality camera system on board, Venera 13 delivered the first color photos from the lovely hell of Venus. When it landed on March 1, 1982, Venera 13 was equipped for the first time with a camera capable of taking color photos, an absolute first for Venus and a major advance in space exploration. Venera 13 landed successfully and immediately began collecting data. The probe not only sent back the first color photos of the surface of Venus, but also detailed analyses of soil samples. The images showed an inhospitable, rocky landscape with flat stones and a thin layer of sand. The colors of Venus's surface, 
a reddish-orange hue, were just as impressive as the knowledge that these images were taken by a probe that had landed on a hot-as-hell planet over 40 million kilometers away. One small fly in the ointment was that the camera could not be fully extended, and the panoramic images remained incomplete. But the triumph was not long in coming. The drill continued just a few days later with Venera 14. The next probe landed on March 5, 1982, and Venera 14 achieved the unthinkable. Color panoramic images of Venus with such sharpness and detail that scientists still consider these images to be among the best in space research today. A particular highlight of this mission was to be a new drilling system that was specially developed to take and analyze even more soil samples. While Venera 13 performed solidly, Venera 14 struggled with a small but crucial problem. The drill extended perfectly, but then landed on one of the camera's lens caps, which had just been dropped instead of on the ground. Nevertheless, the panoramic images and scientific findings of the Venera probes became legends of space travel and a proud legacy of the Soviet Union. Even decades later, the panoramic images taken by Venera 13 and 14 have lost none of their fascination. The photos showed Venus in all its harsh beauty, a world of broken rocks and rugged landscapes lying beneath a thick orange haze. These images not only captivate us, but are still a real treat for scientists today, who gain valuable information about the planet's geological processes and surface from the formations and rock types. Venera 13 and 14 were the Soviets' last successful missions to Venus. To this day, a number of myths and legends surround the images from the mission. Insiders are said to have claimed that the Soviet Union only published some of the images at the time. Secret images, which allegedly show mysterious shadows and movements on the surface of Venus, are said to be under strict lock and key to this day. Subscribe to the channel now and look forward to new exciting videos.